in any family law or divorce case, there are certain disclosure requirements for the parties to identify assets, finances, income, and provide that information to the other party. In almost every state, there's specific reporting documents like this financial affidavit in Illinois. There's also um, certificate of compliance. In this case, it's Florida. I'm, I'm sorry, this is Colorado. And the disclosures are made in order to have open communications and full transparency of assets. The problem is many parties in a divorce case or probate case for that matter will not completely be honest with these um, affidavits. And we're gonna talk about how to audit these and verify these and make sure they're done correctly. And what you can do if you suspect that the other party in your divorce case is hiding assets or has made fraudulent statements on their document. And the reason why this can be done is because in most cases, the party that's committing fraud or uh, preparing fraudulent documents does not fear that there will be any verification of their statements. They just f feel like, I can just put down whatever I want, no one's ever gonna um, follow up on it. And it's normally true. Most times the other party doesn't verify it or doesn't take efforts to confirm the information is correct. So let's take a look at a document, what's put down and how to uh, follow through to make sure you're not being improperly um, withheld of assets that honestly belong to you. If you are entitled to assets, money, finances, the other side can't withhold them from you um, without you discovering that. So here's in the first section of this form, important, if you intentionally or recklessly enter inaccurate or misleading information, you may face significant penalties, including costs and attorney's fees. This is crucial because if you do discover that there were inaccuracies or fraud on this form, not only do you get those assets brought back into this divorce case, but you may be able to ask for cost and attorney's fees if it costs you money to find that out. If you paid for an investigation or legal fees or, or motions that you had to come out of pocket, the court can award those back to you. Again, this is not entitled, uh, intended to be legal advice. Get good legal advice from an attorney. These are just observations we've seen in similar cases. So when this form is filled out, you know the person will put down which side they're on, petitioner or respondent. Um, I affirm this affidavit is correct as of a certain date. This is crucial that it has a date because you can't say later that you didn't have the money on this date or you did. And that's why it's important to do an asset search on the other party when the divorce is beginning, not just at the end, but when it's beginning. So you can make sure the assets weren't squirreled away during the divorce. And then you have to attach most recent copies of documents, pay stubs, income tax returns, bank statements. You can see right here, important thing, bank statements, and then other documents. Your name, address, date of birth, um, other people who may contribute to your household. I live with another adult who helps me pay expenses. This person is not the petitioner or respondent. Well, what does that mean? The court will take into account if a person is living, cohabitating with somebody that shares expenses. A lot of times people will overlook this and they'll leave it out because they don't want to be penalized because they live with somebody. That's something you want to verify. If they say, no, I do not live with somebody else, you may want to verify that they do to see if they lied. Employment, self-employed, unemployed, um, information about your paycheck. Is it um, every month, every two weeks, every week, paid in cash? What's your income? Self-employment. This is important. If a person claims to be self-employed, they can't just say that they don't make any money. They have to put down their gross receipts for the last year, how much this year, what their expenses are if they receive a company car, um, any kind of stipends or benefits, and then their income, what's your gross income and taxes. This can be verified with the IRS. And then 
all your sources of monthly gross income, your regular pay, your overtime, tips, if you're in the service industry, interest income, dividend income. The reason why this is important to look at is because if somebody puts down annuity or dividend income, then that implies that there are stocks or securities owned by the person. If there's not an attachment showing a an account, an investment account, then you want to know where did this dividend income come from? If they put down zero, but you know they own stocks, well, where's the dividend? Where's the interest? Right? So you match it back and forth both directions. Do they have Social Security? Do they receive unemployment? Uh, any disability? Um, is there any investment income? Right? Do they own um, any assets that throw off income? Do you have rental income from real estate? Partnership income? Are you partners with anybody in a business? Distributions and draws. This is crucial. A lot of times a owner's draw or owner's distribution can be structured in a way that doesn't trigger a taxable event. So if a person just gets an owner's draw, they're getting money from a business or from some other enterprise, but it's not showing up on taxes. So it's important to verify if this is the case. Do they have any royalties from intellectual property? Um, any spousal maintenance or other maintenance? Um, any gifts, right? A lot of times people will claim that they're surviving because somebody's just giving them money. Well, they have to, they have to document that and disclose that. Okay, what are the deductions? You know, different taxes, FICA, Medicare. Um, do you have any currently uh, existing maintenance, child support, and then you have to get into your living expenses. This is where it's a very valuable form. Mortgage or rent, whatever they put down, you want to verify that. If they say they're paying $800 a month rent, you want to get a copy of the lease to make sure that's true. You want to see what name the lease is in. You want to see if there's any co-signers or co-residents on that lease because that can indicate another source of offset income. Um, is there any second mortgage or home equity loan? Well, if there is, when was it taken out? Where'd the money go? How much are real estate taxes? How much are HOA fees? How much is insurance? You wanna look at insurance. Again, is there an additional insured or additional loss payee on that policy? Because those people or parties can be valuable sources of information. When you get insurance, a lot of times you have to submit documents sometimes financial documents. So if they're paying for some type of insurance, you want to get a copy of that policy so you can look for those additional coverages. And then your regular utilities, gas, electric, telephone, TV, internet, uh, municipal utilities. Well, here's the thing. You want to look at those too. What names are they in? Do they cover other properties? What is the account that's paying for them? This is crucial. If you find a telephone bill or a cell phone bill or an electric bill, you want to see what account was paying those bills because you may find hidden bank accounts that are paying these bills. A lot of times people will hide money in a secret bank account or one that's not disclosed, but use that account to fund some of these other expenses. So you want to look at those payees. And then other things like house cleaning, repairs, maintenance, that kind of thing. Make sure if you see repairs or maintenance on a property that you look at that invoice to see if it covered another property. We had a case last month where a party had a, um, a contractor that came in and did some work on, on the family residence, the marital residence. And it was known, everybody knew that that was there. But what happened was that same contractor had done work on another property that was owned by the defendant. And turns out this property hadn't been disclosed. They had bought a condo for a girlfriend and didn't tell anybody about it. And it was only discovered because we found a maintenance bill from a contractor that basically billed for both uh, properties on the same invoice. What about vehicles? Is there a car payment, repairs, maintenance? Same thing, you wanna look at those registrations, those titles to see who's on the title. When was it purchased? If there is a car payment, you want to try to get a copy of the documents for that loan. For example, if somebody buys a vehicle at a dealership, let's say you go to the Honda dealership and buy a new Honda Accord and you finance it, 
When you finance that vehicle, you have to fill out a credit application that says what your income is. Well, it might be nice to get a copy of that to see if that income matches what they put on this disclosure. Other personal expenses, medical, you want to see if they have insurance. Some of this you may know, but you might want to check it out. Here's the thing, life insurance. You want to know what life insurance policies are in existence for this person because it could be a valuable source to see if they have other beneficiaries, to see if they've changed it, uh, to see if there's one that has a cash value that might properly belong to the estate. Health insurance, you want to know about that. Here's important, my assets, my assets, my assets. Cash and cash equivalents, checking, savings, or credit union accounts. They have to put the name of the bank, the name on the account, and what account type it is, and the balance. You want to verify this. You don't want to take this at face value. This is where we see the most fraud. Somebody will put down two or three accounts and come to find out they have other hidden accounts or certificates of deposit. You want to get copies of statements for these accounts. If they put down Wells Fargo and a certain... Uh, name on the account and an account type you want to request an actual copy here's why if a person knows they're going into a divorce event what they might do is prior to that shift some money out of there we've seen people that have taken you know they had six or seven hundred thousand dollars in a checking account they take a cashier's check for hundred and fifty thousand out of that account and just put the cashier's check in a safe place so now the account looks like it has lower value it's a safe way to keep money you want to look for those withdrawals same thing with certificates of deposit they're not as common anymore but you want to verify that there's none of those that exist are there any prepaid debit cards it's another way that people try to hide money they purchase a debit card and prepay a balance on it or prepay their taxes we'll talk about that later investment accounts do you have any of these is it an ira 401k ira account and it only has place for three, but it says I have attached additional forms if they have more than three. Investment and brokerage accounts, mutual funds. These are all things that you want to know about. Real estate, real estate, real estate. Even though you may be aware of real estate that's owned, you want to do a full title forensics on that real estate. You want to verify the deeds, the mortgages, the liens, who signed them, who are the witnesses. We have other videos we've done about title forensics. You just don't want to take it for granted that you know, yeah, they own 12 Main Street. Well, was there any new mortgages placed on the property? Was there cash out refinance? Was there a home equity line of credit? Are there other properties on the same insurance policy? Motor vehicles, we kind of talked about. You want to know about those. Business interests. You notice it doesn't say corporations, LLCs, because they want to keep it broad. Any any type of business interest you want to know about and you want to verify it you want to investigate with the secretary of state to see if there's any businesses that are shell companies hidden in somebody else's name not disclosed properly you want to know about them or things like trade names licenses um, fictitious names or corporations in other states is there any life insurance benefiting the person retirement benefits even things that are not traditionally um, itemized valuable collectibles is there anything of value we had a client that knew that the debtor in their case was hiding assets they had millions of dollars and all of a sudden they had none and they went and they did an investigation no bank accounts no real estate no anything and they had a house the person lived in and the investigator went to interview the debtor and everything looked nothing out of place in the house but when we were looking at photos later we noticed that the house was full of antiques and unless you knew how to identify these antiques you wouldn't have known that within that house was eight hundred thousand dollars worth of antique furniture hidden in plain sight so you want to know how to verify those types of assets other personal property transfer sale of assets within the last two years so you have to identify did you sell any assets within the last two years worth more than a thousand and you want to verify that. This is where people lie a lot. They put down, oh, I didn't sell anything. I didn't give anything away. But you can find that they did. And there's ways to investigate that. Are there any lawsuits that you have against you or that you filed against somebody else? 
do you have any income tax refunds owed? Meaning that, did you prepay your taxes? Do you have money that's owed to you? And then, at the very bottom, they have to sign it. I certify that everything in the financial affidavit is true. I understand that making a false statement is perjury and there's penalties under law. You want to verify it because if you can prove that the person committed perjury, not only do you get that asset brought back in, but you can normally get sanctions and the court will look more favorably on your case. How does Colorado deal with this? Same thing. They talk about that you have to comply with mandatory financial disclosures. And this is what you have to disclose. A sworn financial statement, not just a made up QuickBooks statement that you printed out or an Excel spreadsheet. It has to be sworn. You have to show your income tax returns for the last three years, personal financial statement for the last three years, business financial statement, any real estate documents, appraisal, title, etc. Again, you want to take all of these and have them reviewed by your investigator to make sure that forensics are done to see if there's any gaps in the asset flow, to make sure no assets transferred away from the estate or into the estate or that other parties are not involved. The fact that the state requires that the the party to the case provide all these is good. You want to make sure that you verify all of them. So somebody doesn't take Photoshop and cross out assets on their retirement plan or that changes numbers on their financial statement. There are ways to document financial statements to make sure that they audit correctly, that the numbers add up, that they add up in between the statements. So if their personal financial statement shows a um, owner's distribution, that that shows up on the, um, on the balance sheet of the financial statement for the business and vice versa. Everything should match up. Everything's a um, double entry system with accounting. So you can't just have a, an expense that disappears or an asset that comes out of nowhere. Same thing, I certify to the best of my knowledge the disclosures are complete and correct and I did not change anything else on the form. Under penalty of perjury, just like the other state. Signature is required, I certify that a true copy was served on the other party. You have to give this to the other side of the case so when you get it, the first thing you do is have all these documents inspected audited and verified so that when you go to court if you find any discrepancies you can bring that out and that'll be your smoking gun asset concealment is huge within family law cases it's the fastest growing area of asset searches that we do if you're involved with any kind of family law case make sure that you're verifying the asset uh, disclosures that you're being given don't just take somebody's word for it um, so that you get all the assets, payment, spousal support, maintenance, child support that you're entitled to, and nobody can shortchange you on what you have coming to you.